once again, Wednesday, 11 p.m. Central European Summer Time. Chessbra lecture, like you know, guys, I'm just teaching you how to play e4 with white pieces. I'm just trying to help you building up like very serious, reliable and good opening repertoire. Hope you're gonna like this. Uh, actually, you're gonna like this both guys on Chessbra. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining. Hope there will be much more people as the time goes by and hope we're gonna break the record and uh, will be more than 400 people in these lessons. Uh, also, I'd like to welcome the guys from chess.com who are going to um, embed this uh, stream and this uh, official live lecture and enjoy. Uh, tonight, actually I got like so many requests, so many questions. What am I going to teach you? To play knight d2, Taraj defense or knight c3, win over for white. I just opted for knight c3. Uh, in my opinion, it's way more interesting and entertaining, even though I think that a knight e2 and Taraj defense is maybe even more solid. Uh, knight c3 uh, is certainly uh, full of theory and has some really, really crazy variations with a lot of things to learn by heart and also a lot of things to remember in terms of homemade analysis. And 92, thanks mainly to Grandmaster Michael Adams, uh, who's like the main representative of that move, maybe we're gonna do some other time. Anyways, uh, just like I told you, tonight I opted for the knight c3 move, and after, you know, black here can go with d takes e4, bishop e4, and knight f6. In the previous lecture, once again, I'll uh, just remind you of that. You can get that one. It's called Attacking the French Rubinstein Defense on YouTube. So we last time checked the d takes e4 and how should we break that one. Uh, speaking of tonight's lecture, I'm just going to show you how to break the move knight f6. Well, even if we go for this lesson, it is not going to be an easy thing because uh, here white has two options e5 or bishop g5 uh, recently richard rapport from hungary played e takes d5 e takes d5 and bishop g5 i also know that nigel short a couple times used that system and after like e takes d5 e takes d5 bishop g5 queen d2 long castle bishop d3 knight g on e2 f3 doing the pawn storm on the king side it turned out to be a very interesting system for white so that is also a possibility e5 was played in all those games between carlson nakamura and other game other guys uh lately uh i don't see this bishop g5 move that often uh, i'm not so sure why uh, but basically here after bishop g5 black has three options so black has an option of playing bishop b4 which is called McCatchen variation and it is not going to be the subject of this lesson uh, then there is a line uh, with d takes e4 it's like delayed rubinstein and we'll talk about this maybe and most likely in the next lecture and finally in tonight's lecture we're just going to do this bishop e7 which in my opinion is the most common response by black players and probably uh, it's considered to be the most solid. McCatchen is just one of those side options. A D takes e4 is considered to be like pretty tough to crack, way better than Rubenstein. And finally, uh, we just go for bishop e7. After e5, that's what you have to do. There we go. Black has to play knight f to d7. Uh, you know, after all these years of practicing theory, it turned out to be absolutely the most reliable continuation for black. Apart from that, black can go with knight e4 and knight g8. I'm just going to briefly show you how should you uh, play against these openings because a couple times, uh, for example, in my blitz games, I faced this knight e4, I even faced it two times in tournament games. It's not a big deal. 
it's pretty easy advantage for white. So after you take on e7, queen takes e7. They can also take on c3, in which case you take on d8, they take on d1, you take on c7, they take on b2, and they immediately have to say that in this type of situation, uh, you have like slightly better development. You've got a bishop pair, even though that after like knight c4, you can give it up and give up on the bishop pair. You now have like great control of the dark squares with the bishop d6, and white is just slightly better. Why f3? Because you're opposing the light square bishop that can come to b7 at some point, and you just restrict that piece. You just want to hide your king on f2 and get a better game. Although you don't have to play like this if you don't like it. If you like the bishop pair, you can play knight f3, knight c6, king d2. Uh, just like I said, this knight e4 is not common at all. If somebody does that, he just does it to surprise you. I played both tournament games against pretty good players with bishop e7, queen takes e7, and the main line goes knight e4, d takes e4. And here, there is a key move for white. You just have to do it, and after that, I believe that White has a very easy going game afterwards. So, Queen E2. This move uh, is very close to be a refutation of this system because you just simply want to grab the pawn on e4, but not immediately. Uh, first of all, Queen E2 goes after the pawn on e4, that's what you have to notice. The second thing, you want to make the long castle. And finally, you just want to reject this queen before check with c3 because queen on e2 defends on b2. You're also uh, kicking this queen away. And uh, all eventually, you just want to take the pawn on e4. This is much better for white already. After queen e2, they usually go with like b6. In both of my games, I play like this. Long castles, bishop e7, and there we go. Killer move, g3. What's so important about this move? Uh, just like you uh, saw, uh, with the b6 and bishop e7, black tried to defend the pawn on e4, but it's not gonna work that way because we go for like g3 and bishop g2 trying to get a pawn. Eventually, they won't have a possibility to defend this pawn on e4. Also, since we play g3, we won't have any troubles with some queen g5 checks by black, and uh, we just want to take this pawn on e4. By the way, some players instead of d6, uh, instead of b6, play bishop d7. Same idea, absolutely same plan. G3. By the way, uh, don't feel bothered by any uh, e3 because you just play f3 and afterwards uh, pick the pawn on e3 very easily. After knight d7, bishop g2. If they try to defend this pawn with f5, it's more like artificial. Uh, attempt by black to defend this pawn on e4, you just take knight takes on f6 and they immediately have to point out how weak are these pawns, but even though these pawns are so weak, you here uh, play one uh, pretty unexpected move, f3, uh, which really looks good for a white, and even, uh, even though you actually give your opponent chance to play without these double pawns, uh, you've just created like uh, such a big uh, big weakness in black's camp and that's the e6 pawn so they're uh, simply uh, going to suffer because of this isolated pawn on e6 and position is clearly clearly better for white why this rook to d3 the, it goes to e3 since the knight on f3 keeps an eye on the d4 but sometimes who knows, maybe this rook can go over the third rank and launch the attack for white. Guys, that would be all about bishop g5, uh, e5, and if they play knight to e4. I wouldn't like to waste time on this. I just want to briefly show you what to do if they ever play knight g8. A couple times I had a chance to play against players who do that. Uh, why do they want to do that? Because sometimes in these French positions, knight wants to uh, capture on e7 and eventually wants to go after the center knight e7 knight f5 reaching this uh, square on f5 and breaking the in the center uh, pawn chain with a c5 there is uh, once again a crucial move here for white uh, it's kind of very logical because you just bring your bishop back to e3 why you just have to uh, keep pieces on the board and uh, do one more thing. 
uh, you actually get some space on the king's side. You just want to bring your queen very next move to g4. And by the way, I just have to notice that this knight can literally not move anywhere. It has like a lot of problems on the king's side on g8. Bishop on e7 is not be better either. So this is like a really, really good game for white. I'm just going to show you one game uh, played between uh, two uh, pretty uh, solid guys. Black played b6. A very logical attempt by black to get rid of the light square bishop, actually the weakest black piece in the French. Uh, here I very much like white's approach. Usually when your opponents try to exchange the light square bishop, you should always uh, keep the king's side open for the queen. And that actually means you should never play knight f3. But your knight should go to h3. What's so special about having this knight on h3? So once they play bishop a6, you capture an a6. And now your queen goes onto the king's side with a queen g4. You don't only get with a tempi possibility to make the long or short castle. Usually you make the long castle in such positions. But also... Uh, not playing knight f3 gave you opportunity to play afterwards uh, that queen on g4 and to come with this knight onto the king's side with some knight to a f4. This is good because afterwards sometimes you make some pressure on the d5 e6 pawns but eventually you can just push these pawns and play on the king's side with h4 and h5. Somebody said my favorite move. Uh, that would be all about these side lines i wouldn't waste time we usually i waste so much time and spend some time analyzing those side lines that i usually get stuck on the main one and uh, then i just uh, speed up when it comes to the main lines night after d7 uh, i remember uh, the whole my uh, childhood and after that when i was just becoming a, a bit better chess player uh, I've been using the system with the bishop e7 and after queen takes e7, f4. Uh, the whole point of this system is getting a very solid pawn structure, playing knight f3, playing queen d2, making long castle with very tiny positional advantage for black. Everything is based on not having c5 because you immediately jump with this knight taking care of either knight c7 or knight e6. So they have to play a6 to prevent that and to be able to play c5. Once they play knight f3, c5, queen d2, knight c6, you just capture on c5. Whether, whether they take by queen or knight, you just play the long castle and white has a bit better position. I've been watching um, Kramnik, how he plays these positions and he's just complete killer with some queen f2 system afterwards. Karyakin won a couple of games there as well, so it's considered to be solid and long-term advantage for white. Uh, just like you know my style, you know my opening choices, I guess you know that I would never teach you that bishop e7 because it's probably a bit slower and a bit like more boring and dull for my, my, my chess understanding and style. So I just go with the h4. I'm going to rarely name any gambit uh, being like uh, fully uh, safe and sound, like this h4. The name of the h4 is Alekhine Shattered Gambit. You probably heard of this one. Uh, you probably know that, for example, uh, amongst all these top players nowadays, uh, Vashela Grav used it in the past, Gary Kasparo, uh, Grishchuk used it, and we're going to check games of all these guys. There is a famous game where Gary Kasparov uh, beat uh, Korchnoi. There is a famous game uh, where Caruana crushed uh, somebody in one of the sidelines of this gambit. There is a famous game where Grishchuk came up with uh, uh, extraordinary novelty and almost refuted the system playing against a well-known French player, uh, Brunel. Uh, so, after h4, we just have to slowly uh, start checking all these side possibilities and eventually to check the bishop to g5, which is considered to be the main option for black. So, let's go. h4. 
After h4, black has like so many options. Just like I told you, bishop g5 is the main line. But let's get started with c5. c5 is a typical French break that is not going to be like uh, fully applicable here, even though there are like so many players who go with this move, it's considered to be still a, 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 at least a bit better for white. And there are like certain type uh, of uh, plans and ideas that white can do and can get a pretty uh, good position there. So after bishop takes e7, they can play queen takes e7 or king e7. If they play queen e7, I wouldn't like to uh, bother you with like tones of analysis. You guys just have to remember that you play knight b5. Extremely annoying because whether your knight jumps to c7 going after the rook a8 or knight goes to d6 giving check and breaking the castle, we just have to consider this position being better for white. Uh, so this line is a little bit weird because king has to take on e7 I'm not used on uh, simply first of all I, I never played this variation if I was black against anyone uh, also I don't like the king being in the center of the board being so exposed and even if you're like the best player you can always make some mistakes and uh, this risky way of playing could always backfire you at some point so let's go with the king e7 after they do it i'm just going to tell you uh, one of my uh, special approaches in all these a la kind shattered systems this is going to be the first position for tonight uh, but i always absolutely always take on c5 opening up the game and especially i'm happy you know i'm i'm very happy to do it because the king on e7 feels kind of unsafe. So after d takes c5, I don't want to count pawns. I don't want to uh, simply pay attention and material disadvantage. We're going to lose probably most both of these pawns, c5 and d5. I don't care. We just go for the king. We just go for the mate. Uh, tournament practice has showed that uh, in like 80% of, of games, after d takes e5, white just has a, a very easy game, they just win their, those games, and usually using like very nice uh, tactics. After d takes c5, there are like two moves, queen, t queen c7, or also knight can take on c5, or finally knight takes e5. When I play my games, uh, mostly my opponents took on e5. Uh, usually when I play this variation, I played it against some usually titled guys, because who else would play c5 and uh, take by king on e7, but simply position is so good uh, for white death, I don't think that I, I should show you anything else, but probably my plan and what I usually do here with white. I always kick this knight away with a queen e2, and uh, when they uh, play this knight c6, we just go with a long castle. I just have to thanks. Uh, I just have to uh, say thank you so much for uh, donating for this lesson. I appreciate that very much. And all these analysis that I do, guys, for you, I do it uh, on a highly professional way. I'm just trying to share with you all my not just passion, but time that I spent analyzing all these variations for years, being coach and. I just tried to give some reliable, good lines that I told you that couple of times, even a couple of GMs told me that they don't use this analysis only for their students, but for themselves and th their tournaments. So you guys uh, should appreciate that so much. Chessy96, thank you so much for that. Okay, let's go there. And uh, after like nine uh, long castles, D4. D4 is only one of the moves. I mean, they can put the king uh, from the center, but then you just play F4, knight E7. You don't care about the pawn. I told you that. Don't You don't care about the material. Just go and launch the attack. Space is yours. Development is yours. You got a safer king. You got actually all preconditions to play this game and to carry on and to play for a win there. So this is not a problem. This variation is just so good. If they play queen C7, 
f4. I just want to show you a couple of times I played my blitz games, knight c5, queen d2. Uh, this is a cheap, very cheap trick. And if queen a5, this is for lower rated guys. Knight takes d5 check and it just turns out how weak this king in the center could be if you come up with such a cheap trick. I saw this uh, in a couple of games, uh, but of course, once again, this is just for uh, you guys who are not that familiar with the tactics or who, who just have problems uh, with some of these lines. So I just showed you why queen a5 shouldn't work. So after queen c7, f4, we're not defending this one. Do we have to? No, we don't have to. I mean, uh, relax, you can play anything you like. This is just okay game for white. After like f4, queen c5, queen d2, knight f3, this reminds me uh, on the main line, uh, on the main line where you take on e7 and where the queen takes on e7. Although this is an improved version for white, or let's just say it's a worse version for black because the king is on e7. a3, why a3? Uh, because uh, white wants to stop knight before why wants to stop knight before because sometimes he wants to play uh, a bishop d3 but also at the moment i'm not sure if you see that he just wants to trap the queen uh, with the before that's a nice trick that's a nice trick and you can just go for uh, before kicking the queen away like this and trapping the queen up just like in this one so uh, after a5. So like I said, a3 has like uh, two points to, at the moment, just threaten to trap this queen with a b4, but at the same time, you just want to play bishop to d3 and sometimes avoid that knight b4. After like a5, h5, you want to break on the king side with h6, h6, and then along castles. By the way, I just got some messages. Do I provide uh, PGN files for uh, after these lectures yes I do so just let me know and I'm send me on my email you know the conditions you just have to po post whether positive or negative comment or give some advices how would you like to have these lessons would you like to change something would you like to carry on working like this uh, just put your comment on YouTube channel and afterwards uh, we just uh, you know, just send me an email and uh, I'll resend actually and I'm going to reply and send you the PGN files. So after bishop d7, king b1, a4, Morozovic brought his rook onto the third rank using the rook lifting, going after the king's side and once again turns out that the d6 is like really weak square. He went there and Korchnoi got badly bitten after queen d3. 20 moves Korchnoi lost to Morozovic. We all know how Morozovic uh, used to be a strong like uh, 15 years ago. I mean, he's still one of the top world players, but at that time he's definitely one of the strongest and most original guys in the world. And here he just crushed Korchnoi in 20 moves. Korchnoi, who's, who's been known like one of absolutely the best uh, opponents uh, one of the best players and uh, definitely uh, French uh, French uh, representatives but just like you see and uh, I usually talk to my students about that who amongst top players on regular basis French uh, you used to have Korchnoi, Barev, Akopian uh, actually you had like tons of guys but nowadays it's not like that from time to time Carlson used that from time to time uh, Nakamura other guys as well but basically uh, it's not a regular opening choice by any top player anymore anyways uh, this was the line this was the line c5 so once again you take if the queen takes knight b5 please guys don't forget about this trick uh, black cannot stop both knight c7 with check winning the winning an exchange at list or knight d6 bringing the knight into the heart of the black's position and playing knight d6. If they play king d7, you just go with like d takes c5 and this would be uh, one of the key moments of this analysis in this lecture. So usually in the whole this lecture and all this Alekhan shattered attack, I'm going to insist very much on d takes c5 move. There we go.
that was all about c5 then there is another line then there is another line uh, there is a line with short castle i remember that line used to be very popular i even read some uh, interesting surveys and articles on the short castle and it was considered to be good for black for like a couple of years uh, you just play bishop to d3 why you just want in the very patser way to bring your queen up to h5 threatening this pawn on h7 <clears throat> it's very uh, tempting it's very logical and for most of you that should be of course the most logical uh, continuation so <clears throat> after like bishop d3 they go c5 why they just want to break the center so after queen h5 this queen just like i previously told you enters onto the king's side and creates so many weaknesses of course uh, black can never play h6 because bishop h6 and the mate is coming black can never play f5 to stop the attack on the f7 because you just take take on f7 and bishop h7 bishop g6 queen h7 checkmate so black has to play g6 this is why i like this variation so much because it's easy for remembering it's one of those first lines queen h6 uh, for many years this variation was absolutely undefined in terms of evaluation and like a couple of years ago uh, they just considered this line to be dead equal so after like c takes d4 c takes d4 you just play knight f3 uh, that was a very big novelty at the moment when it showed so this is a nice developing move but the point of this move is not white's development the point of this move is the knight sack but actually the point behind this move is defense on the bishop on g5 why because let's imagine black just plays something like d takes c3 then you just do h5 you can't stop h takes h takes g6 followed by queen h7 or queen h8 if they want to take now you're just gonna take on g5 and once again checkmate is uh, inevitable so they, they they're not supposed to take by the way if they play and if they take on b2 just play cool move rook b1 and they don't have any defense then somebody uh, against me played once in a blitz game very interesting move i played knight f3 and he played rook to e8 wants to not just defend himself with the bishop f8 bishop g7 and maybe some knight f8 but wants to trap my queen followed by bishop f8 so it's a good one but there we go knight b5 uh, what a crazy move is this knight b5 because uh, you can't play bishop f8 still because the queen is hanging and when they play like knight c6 you play h5 when they finally play bishop f8 you play h takes g6 sacking the queen taking on f7 taking on d8 and when they take now your knight threatens to come onto d6 with check they take you take a rook h7 knight takes d4 white wins a pawn white wins this end game okay this sequence a sequence of moves i was maybe moving a little bit faster but i just have to be very fast and have to be uh pretty much to the point we're not going to analyze bad stuff so believe it or not after this knight f3 where we defend this bishop and where they cannot touch the knight uh i remember in some russian book i've at that time uh, i i found a move like knight e5 and at that time that move was like once again a revolutional novelty because it's not a point that he uh, sacrifices a piece he doesn't because when you take on e5 when you simply take on e5 they take on c3 and the point behind this uh, pretty much ingenious move with the knight e5 is that you can't play h5 anymore since the bishop on g5 would be a hanging piece that's a good thing and then in all those books i found the following thing i found the following thing that after knight g6 white doesn't have nothing more but f takes g6 this one and the draw then i actually analyzed this a lot more 
and they came up with this famous rook lifting with the rook h3 winning those positions then after like sorry that happens if knight c6 my bad but if d takes c3 uh in all those books i found that uh, white should be going with knight g6 perpetual check and that's it and just like i told you this variation was considered to be equal for all these years then uh, talking to a good friend of mine his rating is 2600 actually 2630 uh, he told me about this move i just made analysis and this is one of those two exclaim mark uh, analysis and homemade preparation by white why is it so good why is it so special for white because i'm interested to include one more piece into the attack and i'm not afraid for example if you now play c takes b2 i'm gonna put my king into safety and this is gonna be even good for me because pawn and b2 just protects my king and being on b1 so when they go with like uh, queen b6 threatening mate in one move you now have to play this move this is absolutely crazy because if you turn on the engines if you play this position on the engine for example this is G gm analysis if you play this position on the engine um, engine will say 0, 0.00 and will say all these variations are just dead wrong but you know i've been analyzing uh, these positions for like for days and days and uh, preparing one of my students to play one of his most important games in some world championship under 20 we just prepared for white one german guy and we prepared this one for white queen b1 king e2 queen b4 why is it so important because here after you uh, include this rook on e1 and prepare your pieces to attack uh, since the queen left protection of the, the g5 uh, actually it's not anymore defending you can easily push h5 but first you gotta make sure not to blunder mate queen b2 so after king b2 king d1 check watch out bishop on e7 is hanging they can never touch our bishop because if they touch our bishop h takes g5 and checkmate if they play f6 you just take on g6 this one this this and checkmate so they don't have an easy time here they don't have uh, anything to do but to play these forcing lines so they have to play check king e2 and they put the queen back on b4 defending the bishop on e7 right now you play another crazy move chasing this queen away from uh, its protection of the actually from protection of the bishop on e7 and the point is after queen a3 for example some uh, some people would say my are you crazy why do you show this to people online now everybody will know this refutation of this line well this line is considered to be anyways uh, bad but on the other hand uh, i don't have uh, any secrets for you guys and i'm actually very happy to share these things with you so after queen a3 king f1 absolutely crazy move i don't want to explain you now why do you play king f1 uh, why do you connect all these pieces that you want to play now h5 that you want to sack now that you you should include your rook from here this one comes from here but this is completely winning uh, position for white uh, anyways after queen d6 you play bishop f4 threatening discovered knight g6 and after f5 you can do knight g6 but way better move is g4 breaking immediately there you want to play g takes f5 rook g1 and sacking on g6 so this should be your plan for example and sacking eventually on g6 or you just want to crush them with some h5 at some point somehow uh, there are like plenty of analysis here plenty of different variations i think it's just important to show you like these most important lines and then i just gave you gave you like some very top and secret novelties that could be even even good for some 2600 players uh, what's the summary of this variation uh, even though it it's been considered to be pretty much a tough variation to be correct i believe that uh, after all these variations and especially after 12th move by white long castle white should be uh, winning in this line so i don't claim this variation to be slightly better for white 
but in in the worst case scenario for white it should be at least much better anyways uh, after like long castle that's how we reach the edge in these positions uh, in many blitz games simply my opponents don't like to accept the gambit and they play h6 once again i don't want to help these guys uh, exchanging pieces but i just want to maximize my development and my opening so uh, what's so special because uh, i'm bringing my bishop back i keep an opportunity of bringing my queen onto the king side i just want to play queen g4 and eventually if you ever play c5 uh, we always play queen g4 with the tempi and guess guys what are you supposed to do here i remember playing against gm one of my games it was a rapid game in serbian tournament i took of course on c5 that's what i already told you here and uh, this is what i already explained to you so you should play d takes c5 always in absolutely all positions why it's way better with all this activity and all these uh, development and all uh, these attacking possibilities uh, you to take on c5 even at a cost of one pawn but to retain the initiative then just to uh, constantly keep trying to defend yourself or just to play long castle and to give your opponent to take on d4 and to develop his knight on c6 with a tempi by the way i'll repeat it once again i'm not interested in defending any of these pawns in some lines maybe we're going to defend that because simply that's the way it is but usually i don't care i'm not afraid uh, i'm not scared of losing even both pawns I just want to open my d file. I just want to crush your exposed king and the queen in the center. So they all take on e5. If they take play knight c6, you play knight f3. If they play knight e5, we'll analyze that because more or less it transposes into those positions. Once they take on c5, guys, remember you play long castle. Now you you're going to put, and this is my suggestion to all of you who play long castle that's one of my first lessons for all my students guys whenever you play castle put your king on b1 put your king in a safety uh in like two percent of cases it is gonna turn out to be bad in like 98 percent of cases maybe even 99 it is going to be more than good for white uh, so you will play king b1 you can also consider playing some bishop c4 occupying all your pieces there just watch out when you second d5 and when they recapture and d5 not to open the weakest piece in the french and attack your lady so that's why in some of these positions you just go for queen g3 first or queen f4 and then you launch the attack against the center and against the d5 pawn so after castles a6 to stop knight b5 yeah i forgot about that one knight b5 knight d6 another great and very typical pawn sack that you want to do in uh, so many positions like this then you put a king on b1 and now just look at the position sometimes queen goes to f4 sometimes to g3 sometimes it remains on uh, g4 sometimes you want to increase uh, the attack against the d5 pawn sometimes you want to bring your knight on d4 some sometimes you play with h5 sometimes you bring your rook uh, using the rook lifting onto the king side depends depends on like real circumstances more or less black has to suffer he's doomed to inactivity uh, being very undeveloped uh, having like lots of problems here and dealing with like a lot of tactics by white all the time this is why after d takes e5 most of them take on e5 you play queen g3 knight bc6 you play long castles and uh, there we go if they play bishop f6 you have this knight e4 using the queen that is pinned on the d8 chasing away this bishop and trying to stick your knight on d6 eventually so they have to play queen a5 and i'd like to stop here because just like i told you i played against ukrainian gm uh we played a rapid game 25 minutes plus plus five seconds in one tournament i made the next move and uh, he could have immediately resigned bishop d4 uh, this is great move this is the refutation of this line 
not the whole system because black is not forced to play like this but this is just a good example how is white supposed to play so they can't take on d4 because you take on e5 and now both of these pieces are under the attack talking about knight e4 and rook h8 and they just have to go with f6 you take on f6 another nice and surprising move uh, such a strong piece in an open game like a bishop you just give up for the pawn but of course we have like very concrete uh, uh, points here 95 f4 going against the g6 pawn we're still down a pawn actually we're not and we play knight to f3 uh, having this position playing 94 bishop b5 trying to weaken the light squares using the fact that they cannot make long castle that uh, definitely short castle they gave up a long time ago uh, this is like really really good position for white uh, i got another donation for this uh, lesson he just said that uh, he's so thankful because uh, this guy is gonna crush his body he sucks at chess but uh, he likes to play this line and he's scoring good so uh, glad that we're going to uh, that you guys are going to use this stuff that would be all about this variation uh, speaking of h6 so that's about h6 uh, apart from h6 i just want to show you how do they play if instead of this they go with f6 f6 is so once again if h6 you guys play uh, bishop e3 putting the bishop back uh, expanding on the king side eventually f uh, with the queen g4 making the long castle and please once again for all of you uh, any c5 you should myth with d takes c5 so after like c5 you play queen g4 g6 d takes c5 this is my point this is what you have to remember okay this is not the only line uh, h6 uh, similar to that one is f6 I have also faced this one couple of times it's pretty nice uh, way of reaching the advantage here I'm, I'll show you one correspondence game first of all you have to know the move that for sure gives white a very steady uh, positional advantage so you play queen h5 check you're forcing of course if they play king f8 you just take on f6 knight takes f6 bring your lady to e2 play the long castle any c5 mid with d takes e5 and then depending on circumstances in the game you will either develop your knight on f3 controlling uh, both d5 d4 and e5 or maybe play f4 blocking on the dark squares that is one thing but they can play g6 that's the main line uh, you guys who want to play this uh, variation very seriously have to have to remember e takes f6 e takes f6 it's nice because if they take queen on h5 you take the bishop and after like queen e7 bishop e7 king e7 long castle in uh, opening theory this position is considered to be much better for white uh, almost close to be completely winning uh, positionally of course because materially it's, it's it's around equal so after he takes uh, f6 knight takes f6 bring the queen back to e2 sooner or later they'll have to break with c5 whenever they break with c5 i already taught you what to do take on c5 and enjoy your chess so long short castle long castle knight c6 there we go knight f3 and h5 breaking on the king's side it's like very important for example now knight h5 you can face with some uh, bishop e7 knight e7 rook h5 knight e5 with devastating consequences uh, there so f6 is really bad i'll show you one game current spondence game because after f6 queen h5 g6 uh, e takes f6 would be much better but this guy after queen h5 played king f8 and after e takes knight takes queen e2 this is just a little bit different approach with even worse position of the king on f8 the guy played c5 white of course just like i repeated many numerous of times took on c5 knight c6 long castles uh, oops my bad this guy played 
and this guy played knight to a6 wants to uh, recapture on c5 by knight he did it long castles b5 and uh, look at this positional and tactical demolition at the same time queen went to e3 i like it so much because in some positions threatens uh, bishop f6 followed by queen c5 in some positions he just takes control of these two dark squares d4 and e5 and after b4 he he went with the knight b5 i like this one so much once again this knight will jump on d4 another knight will jump on e5 what a great control of d4 and e5 after bishop d7 knight e5 bishop e8 uh, black's position looks really suspicious but at least looks defendable because of all the pieces on the board knight d4 queen b6 bishop d3 you will very often see in these games that we give up the bishop for the knight sometimes we don't want to allow that but in most of cases it's not like the end of the world so after rook c8 rook h2 e1 a5 knight g4 tactics begins if they take uh, white would take on e7 play queen g5 threatening king and the knight and after knight f6 queen g7 black is collapsing because knight f7 doesn't work in the view of knight f5 so after knight g4 in the game was h5 and now completely crazy move bishop f5 using the fact that e7 bishop was pinned and of course that e6 will eventually uh, fall so after bishop f5 knight g4 knight takes e6 queen takes e6 cannot take by knight because queen is hanging had to take by queen hoping that this queen was also under the attack i'm just showing you this a little bit faster so after bishop e7 queen cannot take king had to take queen g5 attacking the queen with a tempi black resigned that was a great game uh, between like very very uh, known um, current pundits players and i just have to say and i usually repeat that to all my students current pundits games are the best games guys for you to learn the, ther the theory from because uh, the, all these guys know their theory they use the engines they analyze these positions for days and they really know what are they doing so after like h4 bishop g5 is the main line but we still haven't reached that main variation we still have to check one more sideline it's the knight c6 and a6 actually those are two more lines so knight c6 knight c6 uh chasbra best player first board and one of the top world players last five years Fabiano Carvana had a great game here. He crushed international master Neubauer from Austria. Let me just show you the game. Knight f3, Carvana developed his piece. Knight b6, Carvana played bishop to d3, developing his last minor piece. Bishop to d7. I remember that my student Lukovic, his international master, had a game against uh, Serbian uh, junior champion and he crushed him in 20 moves using the same idea uh, like uh, Fabiano Caruana so after a3 it stops knight b4 it keeps the light square bishop there so after like a6 sometimes prevent some knight b5 or whatever maybe wants to play some knight a7 knight b5 or bishop b5 Caruana involved another piece into attack one might say okay all these moves are more or less normal for this position and i would highly agree h6 bishop e3 knight a7 rook g3 and i would still say all these moves are normal but now caruana shows his class and uh, he wins this game in five moves believe it or not in five moves so he's slowly but surely bringing all his minor pieces onto the king side 92 going with this knight to f4 and e6 or g6 after like bishop e5 uh, he, he just needs some space to breathe uh, because he wants to play queen d7 and to finally make long castle uh, and he would definitely breathe easier but after fabiano played knight f4 
Uh, this guy cannot play g6 because of bishop g6 and rook g6 e1 chile winning the e6 pawn and king is uh, very in a very serious danger they can't play anything else but they just you know what this knight goes also at on h5 and wants to chase wants to chase uh, the g7 pawn so uh, black played knight f4 knight e7 Caruana played knight h5, provoking this g6, and once again, he showed his class with this rook takes g6 move. Uh, fantastic tactical game, fantastic refutation of this. Uh, this is, this is, this is, this is great. Also, this game was played in back to 2008 when uh, Caruana was just uh, coming and uh, actually he was uh, a rising star at that time uh, now he's like a real top and world star and at this 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 is really uh, great if they capture he would play bishop takes g6 king e7 and once again amazing tactical shot and Carvaz, Carvana's opponent was totally lost after the next move he resigned the next couple of moves but uh, this is for like top players you already sack the rook you already play like bunch of difficult moves I'll be honest with you even if I played all these moves maybe I wouldn't be able to find the last move without one move even though you sacrifice rook even though you have a winning position simply we're not engines and we cannot calculate everything I'm not sure if I would ever even though I consider myself being a good tactical player I'm not sure I'd be able to find the next move knight g5 what a move, immediately collapsing, threatening like a whole bunch of things. Knight takes e6, knight f7, queen g4. Uh, this is, this is uh, totally sick. And after knight g5, uh, black was absolutely moveless. They played a couple more moves and Caruana, uh, Caruana's opponent called, had to call it a day. That was a, a real line. Uh, and uh, I do dare to sacrifice an intuition. I like to play like Tal, but in this in this game, uh, you already sack the rook. You now sack the knight, so you better know what you're doing. Otherwise, it can badly backfire you, and then you would just be one of those guys. Uh, I had a winning position. At least I sacrificed. At least at least it looked good. Well, why why would you always be? Uh, amongst those bunch of players who would constantly keep complaining how you have winning position and how you next time are going to do that do it immediately and be pretty much to the point so we now have to go uh, onto the line when they play a6 so knight c6 you just play knight f3 bishop d3 queen d2 long castle a3 rook h3 and follow Carvana's approach so a6 uh, a6, I like this move so much because two of my games, uh, two of my most beautiful tournament games when I was young, I played with a white pieces. And both of my opponents were like, once it was international master Kalasic from Montenegro, but at that time he wasn't an IM. We both were uh, like juniors. And another opponent was Fide master from Serbia as well. Now I'll show you both of these games and uh, you are going to like this one so much. Queen g4, why? We threatened to take on e7 and to take on g7. Uh, bishop g5. I remember playing one tournament game against h5, queen g3 and g6. At that time, it looked hardly breakable, uh, but this is like a really easy uh, game for white. You just play knight f3, they play c5, you always take on c5, you know it. Long castles, knight c5, king b1. And now they have lots of problems. They have problems with the dark squares, with the king side, with exposed king, with uh, being underdeveloped. This is like really, really good for, uh, for white. Uh, even though you, you don't have anything that concrete, this position is just uh, so difficult for defending as as a worse side by the way don't forget about the music you'll have a chance to play against me 
uh, games in three and five minutes. Don't forget 123 games winning streak by myself. No one of you managed to uh, beat me. Only one draw. So I just want to see you and challenge you this time. But uh, more about this and more about fun and music and stream and everything else after this lecture. This is an official part. So D takes C5, Knight C6, Long Castles and King B1 follow, followed by Bishop C4. By the way, I said last three streams, not if you ever managed to beat me and you guys certainly did that in the past. So after like A6, Queen G4, uh, Bishop takes G5. Bishop takes G5, so uh, H takes G5, threatening G6. Black has to do something here. Black has to play c5, breaking the center. So once they play c5, we just go with g6. They cannot take because if they take uh, by h pawn, rook is hanging. If they take uh, by f takes g6, you just take on h7 followed by g6. But by the way, they cannot even take there. You take on e7 and take knight d5. So they have to play f5. You play queen f4. Now you threaten to take by rook on h7. They have to play h6. Once again, it's our turn. And once again, you just have to take d takes c5. They play knight c6, trying to reach the e5 pawn, knight f3. Now I'll show you three of my tournament games that I won here. First one against candidate master on the championship of my city when I was like, I believe barely 18 years old. He played queen c7. He went for the e5 pawn. I played castles. Uh, he played knight e5. He's threatening this cover check to uh, take my lady away. I put my king into safety, king b1. I just want to remind you. One more reason uh, to fully believe this king b1 option and to like it so much because it even avoids this knight d3 uh, checks with a tempi. So here I, he played queen b8 because he can't move his knight and I'm just threatening a simple move to win the piece on the spot. He put his queen into defense, wants to move this knight and to even win the second pawn. Although I didn't want to waste any of my time, I sacked on d5. When he played e takes d5, I played rook e1, I won this uh, knight on e5 and he resigned the game. This was my game from championship of my city back to 1996. Actually, I was 17 at that time. It was exactly like 20 years ago. Well, I'm getting older. Uh, starting to get these recollections means I'm really old. Uh, so after queen f4, h6, d takes, knight takes, knight f3, and knight c5. This is another game of mine. Uh, this is game against that Fide Master and uh, I don't have that one of my uh, most famous game that was published in a couple of magazines for some reason I didn't put it here but doesn't matter I have another great one against that Fide Master who always was more than well prepared in all these openings especially the French and French was one of his pet variations so long castles, short castles, bishop to c4. Uh, this, this wasn't anything that new at that time. I knew that I was supposed to go after the d5 pawn and he went for the queen e8. And by the way, I just have to be honest with you. I actually borrowed this whole plan and idea by one other Russian game, I believe. I'm not, sure, I'm not so sure. So I sacked my rook on d5. Uh, the guy after some thinking this was serbian team champ not serbian yugoslavian team championship at that time uh, so rook takes d5 i sacked the rook and when he took e takes d5 i sacked another rook on h6 at the moment you would probably have like a lot of difficulties to spot out why did i do this at the moment i'm threatening rook h8 followed by queen h4 and queen h7 with checkmate uh, but after rook h6, my opponent captured, I took on h6, threatening mate in one. He had to put 
uh, his queen on e7 to defend that mate but then I took by my knight and when he played like queen g7 da -da -da -da, knight f6 checkmate I really uh, like this game of mine it was published in like a couple of magazines uh, just like I said honestly speaking I borrowed this idea from some other game but it's always very nice when you crush uh, someone using all these opening ideas so that would be all about side variations against the Alakine shattered attack after h4 this is why they just all go for bishop g5 h takes g5 queen takes g5 and here for all these years the main line was knight h3 going with this knight after queen e7 on f4 bringing the queen to g4 playing the long castle and playing like this and also using this knight on c3 and uh, f4 going sometimes against the d5 pawn until uh, that famous game by Kasparov where he faced Korchnoi and where he played queen to d3 now I'll try to be uh, a little bit faster because I don't want to uh, take this lesson that uh, long uh, for example black can play g6 h6 queen g6 uh, knight f8 all these moves at once so after queen to d3 let me just show you how should you play g6 is the main line this is the green this is the game between grushchuk and brunel brunel is a famous uh, gm who used to be a French player he really knows a lot about this opening but Grishchuk showed his class in this game so after Queen to d3 let me just go uh, with that game between uh, for example a lot of players play Queen g6 against me for example here I have a lot of problems to understand why uh, computers like Queen g6 F takes g6 and playing positionally being down a pawn I don't want to I don't want to do that I don't want to play like this I actually analyze this position I want to keep the Queens on board I sack the pawn I want some initiative so after like Queen d2 a6 why always a6 because you can never play c5 because you by now should be familiar with this one so they play a6 to be able to break in the center and to play c5 and now you play g3 why g3 because you want to play Bishop d3 and you don't want to allow them Queen takes g2 so after like h5 or c5 you just play bishop to d3 i remember playing one blitz game opponent played queen g4 i trapped his queen they have to play f5 in which case you take and play queen e2 a nice move uh, you threaten to play bishop h7 rook h7 you threaten to take on d5 using the so many so many threats at once it's a pretty calm move those kind of moves are very difficult to find sometimes but this one is really uh, useful and works perfect uh, then they can play some h6 they can play some h6 then you always go knight h3 and uh, when they play queen e7 by the way they can play also queen h4 in that case you get a uh, y queen h4 stops knight f4 with a tempi but then you play long castles kick this queen away play knight f4 and now you sack on d5 that's what you have to do after e6 just knight f4 d takes c5 open up the game and win very very easily because the king is weak i was just a little bit faster i don't want to waste time on bad lines if they play queen e7 you just play queen g3 g6 long castles a6 to play c5 knight g5 I like this maneuver it happens very very often in all these positions and the point is once they play knight c6 why not c5 on c5 you have this crazy crazy difficult move 2600 move rookie one simply if they take you play knight d5 and uh kick them with e6 an amazing uh, use of knight on g5 and rook on e1 and this is like a real analysis once again so guys they have to play g6 uh, I'm showing you a game between Alexander Grishchuk and 
a Brino, uh, famous French player who got badly crushed in this game. Knight f3, queen e7, long castles, a6. I don't have to explain you, you know it all to avoid knight b5 if c5. Okay, queen to e3. What is he doing? He's trying to uh, take advantage of the uh, pretty uh, bad dark squares in the black's camp. Uh, also, uh, black just wants to take control of the dark squares. So after queen e3, c5. Now, Grishchuk takes on c5, so queen on a3 had also the point of defending the pawn on e5, at, or let's just say overprotecting this pawn better. Queen c5, who's crazy to trade off queens being down a pawn. Queen f4, knight c6. This is a nice trick. If queen f2, you play rook d4, uh, avoiding afterwards this queen to uh, simply run away and playing the knight d1, trapping up the queen on f2. I like I like this one a lot. So the guy played knight c6, Grishchuk played bishop d3, and everything looks normal, you have to admit. And now uh, the novelty, I believe it was it was novelty of that year, uh, but certainly this was one of the most important theoretical games uh, that I found at the time when it was played, and it was uh, back to, I'm not so sure, but back to 2002 in some Bundesliga. So Grishchuk played crazy bishop e4. This move uh, definitely deserves like two exclamation marks. Uh, the point is, uh, you, you, you're not only threatening to play a3 uh, and then to second e5, but you actually want to provoke them to take on e4, and if they take on e4, uh, that actually happened in the game. Uh, you go with knight e4, uh, threatening some knight e6, queen f7 or knight f7, and after rook f8, Grishchuk kicked this queen away with a tempi, played queen e3, which I like so much, uh, because at some point it turned out that this queen on a3 was decisive piece. Why it was decisive? Because he wa he actually wanted to use this he actually wanted to use this queen for check when once the king comes to d8 and checkmate with a queen b6 his opponent played rook h8 because he was obviously uh, threatening rook h7 by the way if you're wondering uh, if knight e5 works uh, i'm not so sure if you see but then you have just a simple check and king d6 doesn't work because of queen b6 checkmate you can also take the knight on e5 and that's a simple thing. So his opponent played rook h8, knight g5, and he simply uh, couldn't handle the pressure in this game. Uh, knight takes h7. Uh, apart from knight takes h7, you threaten to play knight d6, knight f7. You even threaten knight f7 in some moments immediately. His opponent uh, simply um, cracked uh, under the screen and after like knight h7 threatening knight f6 rook h7 rook h7 king f8 knight f6 resigned in a view of queen e7 and queen c5 i just tried very hard uh, to explain you and to share some of my really uh, great homemade analysis uh, in this variation. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that uh, you're going to apply some of these things in your games. Uh, I keep getting mails by a big number of you who uh, crush their neighbors, uh, uh, your friends, uh, your colleagues at work, uh, even uh, like husbands of your mistresses. So guys, you're just doing great and uh, I wish you to carry on doing like this. Uh, we're just going to carry on with these lectures. They're going to happen just like uh, it used to be every Wednesday, every Wednesday at 11 p.m. Central European summer time. It's important. And uh, I just hope you'll be able, you'll be able to come up with more of these donations. Uh, so 
that would be all for now.